Hey, I'm Vanessa. I'm an alcoholic. I hope you're into awkward and honest overshares about sobriety and spiritual growth because it's kind of my thing or whatever. Hi, everyone. My name is Vanessa. I'm an alcoholic. My sobriety date's October 8th, 2017. And I'm recording this on August 27th, 2024, which is nine years after I got arrested. And actually, it wasn't just arrested. It was literally, I went and showed up for a court date downtown San Diego and was actually I think the word the term is remanded like I showed up for a court appearance and they just booked me <laughs> so I it's also one of my best friends uh birthdays today so shout out to Carly she doesn't watch these I hope um but anyway so this date still is pretty significant in my life even though I tried to make it insignificant the last couple years because I was processing a lot of trauma um but I'm starting to realize actually um somebody told me that like as we go through the seasons our bodies remember certain traumas through certain times of the year and every well last summer and then this summer were the only summers I haven't spent in like full blown. Actually, I, last year I was still kind of. This is the first summer I haven't spent in a full blown depression. Um, I get like seasonal depression in the summers, so I'm pretty good about like not being super sad in the winter time. And I think that has more to do because it's like around my birthday, and I like to celebrate and go on like road trips and stuff like that around my birthday. But the summertime has always presented like conflicting feelings for me. And I know it comes from a very young childhood trauma that I had that happened in July. And so my body always remembers that, right? And so every year it just seems, or like I just pay more attention to the terrible things that happen in the summer. Um, and one of those things was I remember like, you know, in 2015, being super stressed. Like I was just really reevaluating my entire life. And I'm glad that I did. I'm glad that I took that third DUI and the toxic relationship breakup um, and all my arrests and stuff. I really paused to like reflect on like what I was going to make this mean. Because one, I didn't want these things to define me. And I didn't want these things to be like, the thing that I use as a crutch for why I can't get the things that I want in life. Right. So like, um, and even though I do kind of use them now as a way to like define me, I feel like a, the definition of that defining is very different than I'm using it as more of a jumping off point of like, I've been through these experiences and this is not where I want to stay. I want to end up over here somewhere. Um, Whereas I feel like what I was really afraid of having happen for whatever reason, I'll, it, it wasn't illogical though, um, was to like have these things happen to me and then remain stuck in the cycle of those things happening to me. I just didn't want to continue repeating the cycle of being drunk, going to jail, being drunk, going to jail, bad relationships, blah, 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 you know? And so I really wanted to have direction and, um, on August 27th, when I was booked into Las Colinas from San Diego courthouse, um, I just, it was, it was, that was, has probably been my biggest um, way that it's been like a form of a trauma, clearly, right? <laughs> because it was everything before and then everything after. And that was a very defining moment, even though I didn't stay sober, it wasn't, that moment of like, well, for example, I had this spiritual mentor um, who would do like inner child work with me and who, one of his questions actually to get me reconnected to this like idea of God and of like peace <laughs> was he asked me to like close my eyes and just like feel in my body. When was the last time I really felt at peace, right? And this was right in the middle of like my first year of sobriety. I was um, coming off of psych meds because I didn't want to be on psych meds. And I remember the first thing that just came to mind that I said out loud was he was like, okay, so imagine this peacefulness, this just calmness, this knowing that God is around you and that you feel love. Where are you? Tell me what that time and place was. 
And I remember telling him the very first thing that I said, this was in 2018, was it's 2014 and I am lying down on my bed in jail, in a cell. And I am just, God is with me. Like I just felt God with me in that jail cell. And uh, I don't, I still very much remember. It was just, if I'm being completely honest, I think it was this complete so can you guys hear all of drinking water, by the way? Look at her. Please ignore the mess in my apartment right now. Um, also, we just got back from a walk and I just felt inspired to, to do this. So also excuse this mess. Um, and so I remember, I think that it was mostly just this feeling of surrender, you know, and that feeling of surrender, that feeling of peace, that feeling of like, whatever is going to happen to me at this point in time is out of my hands. All I know is like, like the judicial system <laughs> has determined that I am a person who belongs in a jail cell away from society because I am a danger. Like I remember the prosecutor saying that in jail, that I was a danger to society. And it's like me, <laughs> like I'm the drama. That's so crazy to me. Um, but I totally was, oh my God. I was constantly drinking and driving. Um, I was engaging in even just antisocial behaviors as far as not, yeah, like that is an antisocial behavior, like risking my life and the life of others for alcohol and driving. That's a huge antisocial behavior. But, you know, I just remember feeling like such ease that like, I could do nothing from that jail cell. Like anything that was going to happen to me from then on was not really any of my business. The only thing that I could control was what I was going to make out of the situation, which is why when people come to me, I guess it sounds kind of insensitive, but I guess without that backstory, it sounds insensitive. When people come to me with stuff um, about things that they're facing and it's like, yes, that is a big deal. And yes, that is painful. But what are you going to make it mean? And this isn't to say that we should be in a delusion of like, like you're not going to hear like uh, I was going to say, you're not going to hear me say, say that jail was the best experience of my life. But it, it really in a completely non-delusional way, I learned so much. Like, I don't know who I would be right now without that. I would probably be dead or for sure, like in a prison. Um, and so I think back to that time when I was meeting with that spiritual spiritual mentor and he asked me like, you know, when was the last time you felt the presence of God and completely at peace and ease? And it was like in a jail cell. And then I was like, he was like, all right, well, <laughs> You can't really have you functioning out in the world and being in a jail cell. So just tap into that feeling, that remembering, that knowing. And to me, it is always this knowing that at any given point in time, I can surrender to all of the circumstances, to any of the circumstances. There is an incredible power in surrender and just being part of life instead of trying to manage and control it. And I take that with me because especially for days like today, my body still remembers all of the stress of August 2015. And, you know, just every morning waking up completely nauseous, completely sick about my, you know, impending court date. I didn't actually think that I would be arrested that day. I didn't actually think that I would go into the courthouse and not show up for work. You know, like I was stressed to go to work. And so it was just such a destabilizing event in my life that I needed to have happened. It was a moment that shook me to my core uh, and established me on newer footing of like, oh, consequences can happen to my actions and things can get much worse than this, you know, and I learned a lot more about myself and was humbled so much more um, just by getting to learn from other women who were in similar or worse circumstances. Um, and I got to see the women who were wanting to make changes in their lives. And I got to see the women who wanted to, but didn't, weren't going to have that opportunity once they left. And some of those women have still, you know, and some of those women who have all the opportunity to change their life still haven't, you know? And so it's a lot to say 
it's all that to say that like even though I'm happy for the experience and what I've been able to make out of this very stigmatized uh, status of having been someone that's gone to jail for multiple arrests related to my drinking, um, that even though I'm grateful that I can make what I've made out of that, right? I mean, I live independently, which is something I was told I'd never be able to do because my alcoholism was so bad. Um, I have been able to, you know, socialize people with people from all different walks of life. And that is like probably the greatest gift. It's like my world has just opened up so much more, you know? Um, I was just driving by this really beautiful facility um, near UCSD, um, where, I mean, I used to like do work functions and stuff. And this was after, um, all of that happened. And I'm like, how did I have this opportunity to make life this good? And clearly all of this is a God's doing. Um, and I will take a little bit of credit just for knowing that God is able to do all of this with my life right and it's just still only the beginning I can only imagine if I was more obedient what else could be done with me in my life but this is where we're right now okay um and so yeah I'm you know independent I have my license back I have a car I've been able to go on road trips I have an amazing group of friends um I have the support of my family I have an amazing relationship with my nephew you know I have mentors and mentors and people I can call now when I am, um, I have the ability to call people now <laughs> when I'm sad or angry or stressed and, you know, I'm able to help people and I enjoy the work that I do. And, um, I just love to like indulge little girl me and like read about things that interest me and kind of explore my hobbies. And, you know, I get to do all these things and, um, all of that said, it's like this month still kind of got to me as far as like, I still woke up, I was telling my sister this yesterday, I still wake up every morning this month and my body just feels, and this happened to me last year or two, my body just feels on fire with anxiety like the moment that I wake up. And it's just like all of this fear and dread and worry and stress and resentments like come, just like washes over me in the morning. And it's like, all right, <laughs> this is what we're doing. And I immediately have to get into prayer meditation and then it subsides. And then I get to kind of align myself and right size myself and be like, these are the things I have control over. These are the things I don't have control over and to kind of put everything into perspective. And it's like, okay, well, for the things that I do have control over, you know, do I want to have control over them? You know, I'm, I think a lot about like, my relationships with people and like is this something I really that really requires explanation is this something that can just continue coasting is this something that I want to or need to invest in is this something that you know is this a uh, resentment waiting to happen is there some unmet expectation or is this like, I need to continue to pour and pour into this relationship? Is this somebody that absolutely whatever, you know? Um, and so I'm doing that. And like, what about my circumstances? Like, how about where, where I live? Is this where I want to live next year? Is this what I want to be doing next year? I think about that in a really, not in a stressful thinking way, but in a, in a contemplative way of like, what do I hope by next? I usually do this around my birthday, by the way, or around anniversaries, like times like these, like, uh, like when I went to jail and just asking myself like, okay. Um, so in 2014 or 2015, I was, uh, going to jail and everything seemed like my life was over. And now I am here, so I'm extremely happy for myself. And now in nine years, where do I want to see myself? Like, what kind of progress do I want to have made? And I have a picture of that in my mind and it feels and it sounds outrageous and it feels a little like a manic episode, um, except that this has been a vision that I've had since I got out of jail, since I was, since I was in jail, that's really when things became clear and focused for me. And, um, 
Yeah. So I'm hesitating there because I'm not doing any of the things that I need to do. That was a very convicting moment. Thank you, God, um, for reminding me of that. So, you know, uh, it just has been an interesting experience. It's been a great summer. I've enjoyed my summer. I've had um, a lot of fun. Just, I just had a lot of fun. I just really love my life. I really enjoy it. And even saying that, I feel hesitant because I'm like, what if it all gets taken away or whatever, you know? And it's like, everything is here on borrowed time. You know, I, I'm here on borrowed time for God's sake. So um, all of that to say that I probably said that five times and, um, the body is an interesting thing. I I want to kind of rewire myself so that August 27th and the days in the weeks leading up to it, don't feel like a full on body panic attack. Because the interesting thing about that is like, like my, mentally, I'm not anxious about anything. It's just my body remembering the anxiety of years past. And I'm not thinking anything stressful at all. I don't have any stressors really in my life. Oh, except for one thing, which probably may be part of this, but is, um, I don't know, maybe I'll journal about that later on. And I could talk about it at a later time. But it doesn't feel unmanageable, you know, in any way. I'm used to things feeling unmanageable around this time. So, um, yeah, I'm wondering though, like, how are you guys doing? Like, oh, and I also want to tell you guys that I have, so I have two podcast episodes that are up right now. Um, I will eventually extract the audio so I can put them on like other sources like Spotify and stuff. But right now there's the video, um, that you can go and I'm trying to separate them out on my YouTube channel. So they're more easily accessible. And these are going to be interviews with people who are in sobriety and who are, um, have some kind of like growth in their lives. You know, like I'm very much in the spiritual growth. I rely heavily on God for everything. And, uh, there's a lot of strength that comes from that. And I, so I'd like to highlight people with stories like that, people who are able to kind of align themselves to this greater purpose, this greater sense of self. And, um, and I, feel very committed to sharing that message and also to showing the diversity of what that greater good is, right? Um, one of the people I interviewed says G-O-D is good orderly direction. You know, I am I know that people struggle with like a religion concept or with a God concept and that's fine. I'm not here to like evangelize everybody into a certain faith or anything, um, but I do strongly believe that everyone should be relying and tapping into this other greater energy that does not exist within just, well, that exists in cooperation with us. Um, and I understand that that's not a message that's for everyone and that's okay. Um, but I do want to continue to, I feel like I've spent a lot of my life around people, um, trying to argue that and it's are people trying to argue that with me and I'm just not in a place to defend it anymore. So I'm not going to, but I am going to highlight the stories that I love and that encourage me. And, um, all, everything on this channel is for me basically, because if you didn't know, when I first got sober, like the first 30 days that I got sober, I was like white knuckling it. And the only thing that I could watch on YouTube that had anything to do with sobriety was Demi Lovato videos. <laughs> And like to the point where I, and I suddenly became like a really big Demi Lovato fan for like a win or for a fall. It was very interesting. It was actually just for like 30 days until I can get back into sober living. It was really funny. Um, so shout out Demi Lovato. And then come to find out that that series that I was watching with her, she had, she was on Coke that whole time. <laughs> like, and that just goes to show like how big of liars addicts and alcoholics can be like we are skilled at living a double life and actually I think that that's another reason why I do this channel as well is it really makes me like stay honest um it's really easy for me to fall back into like thinking that I have this all under control or like this is all my doing and it's these videos that really 
I'm like, am I really going to say like on a publicly accessible channel that I really have this all under control? And it's like, clearly, no, like that's just not reality. And anybody who knows me in real life knows that that's not reality. Um, so yeah, I have some great interviews coming up. Um, I skipped last week because I, in addition to that, those weird, like full body panic things I was having in the mornings, I was having some other like health issues. Um, and I'm feeling much better now, thank God. And so I have a, a couple of, um, uh, interviews that I want to edit. And then I have more interviews that I'll be recording in the next coming weeks. And I'm really excited about it. And I hope that you guys, uh, if you're not subscribed, that you do subscribe. If you watch, continue leaving comments. I love the comments um, and engaging in conversation with you all. I really want to hear about how you're doing. You know, are you sober? Are you sober curious? Are you just watching this because I don't know, you want to see how weird I am. I don't know. Um, yeah. So I love you and thank you for watching this and leave me a comment. Let me know that you got this far and I will see you in the next podcast episode, which will be out on Thursday. Okay. I love you. Bye.